All right. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I thought that my uh, coworkers and friends liked me, but they scheduled me right after you just ate lunch. So, uh, so I'm sorry for that right now. Uh, my name is Colin Gale. I am the director of human resources at Say Yes Buffalo. Um, and so I have a presentation today. So I was given um, I was given parameters by Johanna. So uh, everything that we talk about are things that she recommended. So uh, and if you have any questions as we go through this, please feel free to reach out. You know, raise your hand or speak out or whatever. Okay, we, I want to have it be a free flow of information, and we'll just get us started here. Um, so here's the agenda for today. Um, these were sort of the topics that we have. So acting professional, communicating effectively, dress to impress, passing the smell test, face you have been notified, and self-care. So first of all, congratulations on being hired in your roles. So for many of you, this may be your first time working in a business setting. Um, this can be challenging, especially if you're navigating behaviors in the workplace. Um, so, the presentation is designed to assist you as you begin this journey towards your career paths. So let's get us started. So acting professional, or acting professionally, maybe is probably the, is, is probably grammatically correct. Um, so, what does that exactly mean? So professional behavior is a form of etiquette in the workplace that is linked primarily to respectful and courteous conduct. So. That just basically means there are a set of rules uh, in the workplace. Um, some of them may be uh, some of them may be explicit, some of them may be implicit, and, uh, and that is sort of what would be sort of classified as professional behavior. For example, for today, I am here. I'm I'm conducting this presentation as the director of human resources, so I dressed up. I didn't, you know, I did not come in uh, with what I wore to bed last night. For example, like you know, a t-shirt and shorts. So if I walked in and did that. People, be, you'd be all looking at me like, who's this guy? So because you'd be thinking, if we're hearing from the head of HR, he sh you know, should we be looking a little bit more professional? So that's sort of w what we're talking about. Um, when you are in a work setting, always think in the back of your head, you want to be conducting yourself as a professional. So what that may mean may vary on your work site. But if you're thinking that, you know that you are going to be watching how it is that you are presenting yourself, which I think is very important. So how do you know what is proper office or organizational etiquette? So what, you know, how do you know this? Well, you may receive a staff or employee handbook where it has a list of sort of what is the do's and don'ts in the workplace. You may want to observe the behavior of other staff. So you're going to be working with, with different people. You're going to see sort of what they're doing. You may want to watch it. So, and I always say you, you want to observe, but doesn't necessarily mean you might want to mimic their behavior. Because the thing is, is that you might be observing someone who's not particularly uh, respected in the workplace because of maybe their behavior. So you might be watching them and you're like, oh, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. But you're like, no, 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 no. So, you know, you can watch, you observe. And, you know, you want to ask the supervisor about the office culture. Or if you get teamed with a buddy or you make friends with somebody, talk to them, someone who's really going to give you sort of the, the nitty gritty. Where they go, OK, I'll, I'll try to stay still instead of moving. Uh, and and, um, and where someone who's going to basically tell you, OK, yeah, this is what you need to know. Or this is sort of what we do. We do our breaks here. We do this, do this. You're going to make friends when you're in the, in the workplace. So you want to, you want to, you want to sort of get a, a, a wide variety. Of, of what is expected in the workplace. I always say the supervisor trumps everything because they're the ones who really are, uh, are in charge. But you still want to look at what's going on with your fellow coworkers. Any questions on anything so far that I've said? OK. So communicating effectively. So effective communication is key to being successful in the workplace. I always say this. You know, and, and everything. I say communication is key to your success because how you communicate or how someone understands you uh, can make or break any sort of situation. Because if I was talking right now and you all had no clue of what I was saying, this this presentation would be a total flop. If you all looking at me like, what? what what's going on? That'd be a problem. 
So I'm trying to make sure that I am uh, communicating effectively. I'm keep I'm looking at your I'm looking at your eyes. You all seem to sort of be understanding what I'm saying. So I feel like there's some sort of effective communication going on. But for effective communication to take place, both the person sending and the individual receiving the message must be able to understand what was communicated. So if I'm saying something to you and you literally do not know what I'm saying, then then it's on me. Then there's effective communication did not take place. If you are talking to me and I'm like, I have no clue of what you're saying to me right now, then effective communication did not take place. Does that does does that make sense to everybody? Okay. All right. Okay. Yes, nodding. So that's see, you're you're understanding what I'm saying. Okay. All right. Um so this may mean that you'll have to communicate in different ways before the message is understood. So you may be trying to communicate something to a coworker, for example, and they're like, I don't know what you're saying, or I don't quite understand. So you may have to say, okay, I, they don't get this, so I need to do it a different way. Furthermore, your coworkers may have to do the same thing for you, especially since, since many of you are new, so you're gonna be I don't, you're learning new things, and you're like, I don't quite understand what that means. Um, I'll, give, I'll give an example with Say Yes. So Say Yes uh, uh, often uses uh, terms, you know, what we might call acronyms or abbreviations. So, you know, so for example, like, uh, so abbreviation VIP, very important person. So there's, uh, because Say Yes does lots of different things in many different realms, sometimes I'm sitting in meetings and people will just say, blah, 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 and they'll say this, and I'm like, I don't know what is happening, so I'll write it down, and usually what I'll do is I'll wait for a break in the action, I'll say, you know, I don't know what that was. What that means? Can you can you can you tell me what that is? So when I use abbreviations, often I will say what it is, so that people understand. Okay, what it is that I'm saying, and then oh, there's an abbreviation attached to it. But not everybody sort of thinks the same way, because sometimes there's that assumption that we all know everything. So when you're working in the workplace, if you're working in a spot where people might use shorthand or sort of a nickname or something, and you're like, I don't know what that is, you can always ask. Because if, they, if they're using that, and you don't understand it, and they're communicating to you, that means effective communication did not take place. Okay? All right, any questions on anything? Okay, all right. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep asking. This is that's part of my presentation style. That I always ask. Make sure that everybody has an opportunity to ask questions, um, because I want to make sure that you understand what I'm saying. So, how do you ask for help in the workplace? You're in the workplace. And, oh, I don't quite understand what's happening. What do I do? So. Your supervisor is the best person to ask when it comes to requesting help. That's, I always say that that's the first person you want to go to. But if they're not the right person, so if they're not the right person because of a couple reasons, let's say you asked them something before and they were, you know, they got, they got a little bit of an attitude or they spoke to you and they said yes and they answered your question but yet you didn't understand what they were saying. So you might want to understand sort of, okay, I really don't want to go to my supervisor. Is it because they're not, they weren't particularly kind to me when I asked them something? Or is it every time they open their mouth, I don't know what they're saying. So you want to sort of identify why that is, because that could be something. And then you want to consider reaching out to your career coach or whomever you are working with at Say Yes. And be like, you know what, I, I like this place, but my supervisor, I don't understand a word they're saying. Or I asked them a question and they got a whole attitude. And I was just trying to figure out what happened. So because we're here to help. So that's, you know, you just, I don't want you to continue going through this experience, let's say a few weeks into it, and you're like, I, I feel like I'm alone because, you know, I can't go to my supervisor. I don't really know the people in the, in the, in the office. I, you know, I don't know. So this is why. So if you're realizing, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for help and I'm not getting it, please reach out to us, okay? Um, if you don't understand a task, what should I do? Let someone know that you don't understand it. You know, so I don't quite get what you're asking me to do, or I don't quite understand what this means, or I don't have the tools that are needed in order for me to do this. Let people know. Don't wait. 
Don't say, oh, I'll figure it out later, or I'm, I, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll talk to somebody later. Because one of the things that we, meaning a lot of times human beings, we will avoid something and avoid it and avoid it. And we'll hope that it's going to get better. So if you realize, I, I don't understand something, let somebody know. Try to identify specifically what it is that you don't understand. And then either verbalize it so where you're talking to someone or send it in an email. So if, if, you're, if someone has given you, you know, a task of, you know, I, I, I would like you to email this list of people. And you realize, well, I don't, I only have half of the people that they're looking for. That is the, that's the problem. So you could say, you know, I, I want to be able to do this. You gave me this list of people, but I only have contact information for half of the people. You're telling them exactly, specifically why it is that you're unable to do the task. And people say, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. And they can get you it. But to say, I, I don't know, I can't do this. But if you say, they say, please uh, email this group of people. And you say, I can't do it. And you leave it like that. They're going to be like, well, why can't you do it? So again, you want to, you want to tell someone oh, specifically, this is why I can't do this, or this is why I don't understand that. Does that make sense? OK. All right. If I am running late, how do I communicate that? We're always, you know, we, there's many of us, we may be running late. You know, life happens. So there should be some sort of policy related to calling in or coming in late. Um, that should be something that should be handed to you when you're starting so you know. But if, but, uh, if there is no policy, I would consider just going, going to the supervisor. If not the supervisor, contact someone that say yes, just to let them know, OK, I, I don't have anybody to contact, or I'm not sure who to contact, so I just want to let you know. Um, consider following up all verbal communication. So if you're calling in, sometimes people are texting in, so this may not be an issue. But if you're calling in, for example, follow up with, in writing. And even if you have texted in, once you're in, once you're in, I would, uh, I would email if, if that's appropriate, your supervisor or whomever, and say, I, you know, thank you so much for your flexibility. I came in, I'm here, I made it in. You know, just sort of do that. So you want to let people know that uh, that you know, I, I this happened. You know, I, I'm here. And, or you can sell, tell people, you know, when you call, then say, you know, just wanted to, uh, uh, you know, let you know I did come in. I came in late. I came in at this time. You could even let them know the time, which I think would be appropriate, especially if you were, if you were expected. And for example, your shift starts at nine. You realize, oh, that's not going to happen today because of whatever. And you don't have to tell people why. That's the other thing. I want to let you know. You don't have to go into the nitty gritty. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, so and so, I couldn't get. You know, I had to take my little sibling here, and this happened, or. You know, something happened. You don't have to get into uh, your, your business. You don't have to you just say, I'm, I am running late today. You could even tell people, I'm expected to begin around this time or between this time and this time. I will email you. I will text you when I arrive. You can absolutely do that. Or I can come to your office and let you know that I've arrived. You can absolutely do that. But you don't have to, you don't have to go into a whole bunch of detail. Okay? That is not something that you absolutely have to do. You could, but you don't have to. I need to make a change to my schedule. How do I let someone know? You want to contact your supervisor again. There should be some sort of policies around this. Um, and if there isn't, I think that is important. You just want to, you might want to let uh, someone with say yes, no. You know, we never got personnel policies. Or I don't know, there's no policy about calling in or, or you know, if I have to take the day off or whatever. So you just want to let us know so that we can make sure that you have the information that you need. OK? Um, you, you know, what I talked about, I just talked about before that you don't have to give people reasons about the change, but you can always give something related to a context uh, if you have to change your schedule. You know, I have a per and, and what, it could be something like one of the things that I always do, you know, I have a, I have a personal issue, so I'm going to have to change my schedule. That's all people need to know. Okay. They're, they're not, people aren't allowed to be asking a whole bunch of questions. That's one of the things that happens in HR. Now, people will be because sometimes people are nosy and they don't pay attention to policy. But you don't have to answer anything. So, no, it's just a personal thing. But thank you so much for your flexibility. That's all you need to do, you know? The same thing if you're ill and you're calling in sick. You don't even have to call. I was, back in the day when, uh, back in the day when you were all 
maybe babies or maybe not born yet when I first started working. Um, you know, people used to do things where they would call in and they pretend that they were sick or they exaggerate their symptoms on the phone. Uh, 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 I can't come in today. It'd be like that type of stuff. And I'm like, I never did that. I would always say, uh, I'm, I'm using a sick day today. <laughs> And, people, and, and back in the day, your bosses could ask, oh, are you sick? I was like, I, and I would repeat, I'm using a sick day today. I'm like, whether or not I'm sick or not, it's my sick day. I'm using it. It's nobody's business but my own. So the same thing with yours, OK? So you don't owe people explanations about what's going on in your life. You're letting people know you're fulfilling the obligation, which is that I'm unable to either attend work today, or I need to change, or I need to uh, running late, or something like that, OK? And I, and, I, and I think that's good practice because, again, it keeps it, it's business-like, it's to the point, and you don't have to keep track of something where someone, because what will happen is someone could be like, mm, oh, well, you know, someone's over there, yeah, they're, they're, they, someone might say something, yeah, they're, they're sick, or, you know, especially if you reveal, oh, you know, I have COVID, I tested positive or something, you know, some, sometimes that information might get out. It shouldn't, but it could. But if you say, I'm unable to, uh, you know, I, I, you know I, I, I'm using a sick day, or I'm able to, I'm able to attend today, or I'm not, even if you say I'm just not quite feeling well, that's fine, okay? You're not giving a lot of details so that people can't have your business spread now in, in, in your workplace. Does that all make sense? Okay. So, email etiquette. So I have, this is actually a live link, so this, this, uh, this presentation, you'll, you'll get a copy of this presentation so you can click on this as well. Um, so email etiquette, there's several rules to this. Uh, I, I grabbed, uh, I grabbed this uh, this document and I put some up here. Um, you wanna you wanna see what your um, your your workplace has. They may actually have some type of um, they might have some type of uh, um, uh, policy around this. But just some things to keep in mind. You wanna use professional greeting. So that's you know you can use dear or to whom it may concern. You can some, you can maybe say hi so and so. But I would probably I would probably not do that at least initially um so uh you know so i think using like dear so and so is probably fine um be wary of excessive exclamation points so you might be excited and you might use an exclamation point um you know i work with somebody right now not at say yes uh, um, you know i'll say this but i work with someone right now who literally uses exclamation points for everything now the irony is that their actual demeanor is exclamation points. It's always like, so and so and so, and Colin, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, whoa. So when I'm reading it, I'm really reading what they're doing. So that's probably, and, and I said to my, and I thought to myself, well, they own their own business, so I guess they can do what they want to do with that. But generally, I would not do a lot of exclamation points. I may not use any. I very rarely use them. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> OK, well, so. But, but my coworkers know that I'm not using a lot of exclamation points. I probably wouldn't do it. You know, I think that I think that especially since you are all very uh, uh, early in your career, I probably that probably not be the way I would start. Okay, that eventually you may want to get to that point, but I wouldn't do it. That's just that's 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 my uh, that's my point of view. Um, be careful when using humor. So. I guess you know I don't want to I don't want to say don't use humor, but you have to think about yourself. How is this going to be received? Because remember, effective communication, it's not only what you're putting out, it's how someone is receiving the message. So you may maybe not want to get funny because it might not seem funny to somebody, or people might not get it either. So just something to keep in mind. Um, the reply all button should be used sparingly. So what does that mean? Um, Sometimes there are people, so if you are, okay, I'll use this example for Say Yes, because this is one of the things that we actually run into at Say Yes, and I know a lot of people know it. Um, we have a, you know, we have like a Say Yes Everyone email address that'll go to everyone at Say Yes. And so, for example, someone, a new person has started. It'll go out, and then the person who sends it out will always say, make sure to respond just to the person don't do reply all because we'll all be getting all of the we'll all be getting great that you're here blah blah blah. So it doesn't matter that you put that because people still do reply all and we're all getting the same message. So 
that's fine to say yes. You know, we're like a family. We're laughing. You know, it's cool. Now, some of your other businesses, it might not be, people might be like, who is that? And why are they doing reply all? And I don't care about this and blah, blah, blah. So you just want to be careful about when you're, when you're doing a reply, you want to say, okay, who do I need to reply to? To just the person that sent this to me? Or do I need to reply to more than one person? Just select that other person. Don't send it to everybody. Yes, Johanna. Absolutely, that's a very good suggestion, and that's a very and that's a very good point too. So, what's that? I'm sorry. Yes, I would. I would also. I would also. I would also encourage this. So, one of the things, emails can be forever. Text messages can also be forever. So, if you don't want to have a paper trail and you're and you want to say something about somebody, you might not want to send it either way. You might want to say, Let, you, you could even text them, say, "I'm gonna call you," and then you can really sort of do it because because no one's really gonna be paying attention to that. But I'm always concerned because the thing is is that with those emails. And, and even with text messages, people people could be shady. They could start screenshotting and mm, let me tell you, this is what they sent to me. You know, I'm just letting you know. So just keep all that in mind. Always proofread before pressing send. That's very important. So what does that mean? So it's just making sure that spelling are correct, you know, grammar is correct. Um, who you're sending this to is correct. That's the other thing, because especially when you're new, you might, you know, you're thinking, okay, what was, what was I'm supposed to be sending it to, to, you know, to, uh, to Colin, but you know, so I'm, I'm sending this to Colin, but then, oh, I'm thinking about Aaron, so I'm, gonna, so then you write, hi, Aaron, blah, 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 and then Colin, I'm looking at this, and I said, why does this say hi, Aaron? What's going on? Like, what, what? And it's confusing. So again, you want to, you want to make sure that you're proofreading everything before you send it. Okay. Um, Double check the recipient address to make sure you're sending it to the correct email address. Also, because one of the things that happens with um, with uh, business email sometimes is, is that there is, um, you know, you could put in the first letter of someone's name and it'll auto it'll auto populate. So that happens a lot with with say yes. So um, and you know, I I made a mistake maybe a couple of weeks ago. And I sent an email to a group of people, and I included someone on there who I shouldn't have included, uh, and it was a mistake because I hit, I think I hit the end button, and it pulled up, it was supposed to pull up one name with the end, it pulled up someone else's, and I was just tip -tap typing away, and then it was like, and I grabbed that, and I just kept moving. And then later the person said, was I supposed to get this? And I was like, oh no, so I made the mistake. So again, you just want to make sure that you're double checking who you're sending things to. And always consider how cultural differences may affect your communication. So that cultural can mean a lot of different things, but just in terms of um, you know, how someone might receive something. You know, or even how you're going to receive something too. That's something else to keep in mind because you might be like, mm, "What in the world is this?" You know, and 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 even if some and so, if something appears to be offensive to you or something like that, that is your experience, so you have every right to be offended by something. But I always say that you want to keep you want to put things in context before you get overly mad. You know, because you can still be annoyed. But I always say, "All right, don't get ready to jump across the desk at somebody because remember, you just want to sort of think about okay." What are they sending? What does this mean? Okay, now why am I mad? What is going on? So that type of thing. Does that make sense to everybody? Do you understand sort of what I'm saying? Okay. So again, this is a, a live link here. So when you click there, there's a whole bunch of different uh, email etiquette, quote unquote, rules. It's really more tips, you know, for, for uh, providing professional email uh, emails. So dress to impress. So what do, what do I wear to work? So review that dress code policy if one exists. 
um, ask the supervisor, you know, what do you, what, what, you could always ask them, what's the dress code here? A lot of times people, people will say business casual is, is generally what people say. So when you hear business casual, that can mean a lot of different things. That's why I would observe the people around, sort of say, okay, what are they wearing? What's going on here? Okay, I can wear something similar. Um, okay, all right, okay, I think I understand it. Also, the other thing you can do is, uh, when you're at it, before you go to a workplace, because now so much stuff is online, you can always Google the business or the organization and then see if you can look at what some of their uh, staff members have worn to different things. That could be helpful too. Um, what are things I absolutely should not wear? So I always say anything with written words. And the only reason why I say this is because people are going to be like staring at that and they're not going to be looking at you or even listening to you. And I think that that can be distracting. Um, if you're wearing something like, for example, we have our say yes people that got you know stuff where oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hit that derail. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they have say yes buffalo. So again, that's you know, that's like that's like our uniform. That's different. So you may be working in a place where you will have like you know company company name or something like that on there. But um, but I mean like you know some people will. You know, I always think, like, the thing that always is in my head is juicy across the butt, you know, so I always think about that. So you don't want to wear that, because you don't want, first of all, you don't want to, especially don't wear anything on your butt, because you don't want anybody looking at that, because all of people are going to be like, it's like, what is that? And then people are going to be looking, no, you don't want that. But the same thing just even with, you know, written words across your chest and stuff, because people are going to be like, huh, you know, what is that? And they're not going to be listening they're not going to be listening to you. They're going to be, even if they think they're listening to you, they're going to keep staring at that. So that's something, you know, I, I, would, I would keep in mind. And outfits that show a lot of skin. Why? Because, again, people will be distracted because what they're going to be trying to do is they're going to be either judging the fact that you're showing skin, they're going to be judging the skin that is showing, uh, they're going to be thinking, why did they wear that outfit? There's going to be a whole bunch of stuff, and they're not going to be listening to you. So those are some things just to keep in mind. Um, those are the only two things that I say for sure that I would that I would really advise people not to do. And so what does that mean to show a lot of skin? Because that's another thing. That can mean a lot of things. You know, I guess to me it is just, I mean, obviously it's the summer. So people, you know, short sleeves, things like that. You know, yes, that's cool. But, you know, you want to be careful with, you know, what, what you're wearing in the workplace because you don't want to show too much where people are like, Oh, they're looking down here, they're looking here, they're looking here. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So you want to just be careful about that. Depend and also, again, look at your workplace, especially if, you know, for those of you who wear, quote, unquote, traditional female clothing, then you want to sort of look and say, okay, what are, what are, what are, what are people wearing here? You know, uh, people who are wearing, quote, unquote, and I, and I always say traditional because everybody can wear what you want to wear. You know, but uh, if you uh, if you want to look at stuff that's sort of traditional male clothing, so it's like, okay, what are what are people doing? What are they doing here? So that's just something to keep in mind. Does that does that make sense to everybody? And the reasons behind it. Okay. So, can I be true to myself and still dress appropriately for the workplace? Absolutely, you absolutely can. So, if there is something that truly represents you. And because you're thinking, man, I'm not someone who you know wears, uh, you know wears a tie and you know button down. I think, what can I wear that's gonna, you know, oh God, did he looks so stiff standing up here, and this is what I'm supposed to be wearing in my workplace. Whoa. you know, what am I gonna do? So, I mean, for me personally, like you know, I have a buffalo tie on. That's just something that I, I wear. I always, I always try to sort of change out my ties. That, that's something. So I always try to find stuff that's sort of true to me. You know, there, but if there's other things that I had, like if I was like if I if I was a jewelry guy or something like that, I would do that. Anything you could always wear something that like that helps represent you. So you could always do that. You could still be true to yourself, but you also want to make sure you want to respect the norms of your workplace. Okay. So I'm encouraged to dress down, but I'm nervous about doing it. What should I do? So the question, of course, is like. Dress down. What does that mean? So you know, I'm watching. I'm watching some people walk through here who have shorts on. Um, you know, and I don't. You know, I don't know. I don't know any of these people. They could be people off the street. Doesn't matter. But the thing is, is that you know, you might be thinking, okay, you know, everybody in here is wearing shorts on Friday. Should I do it too? So, you could, but 
I always say, especially for those of you who are younger in the workplace, I also consider that compromise. Try to stick with sort of the business casual to sort of always be like, I'm still business-like because I'm still in the workplace, but I'm dressing down just a little bit. You know, it doesn't, I think that, I think that for, for many of us, especially when we're younger, um, sometimes it's hard for people to take us seriously. You know, that was something that, uh, that I dealt with for many years. And, you know, I look younger than my actual years, and not, not as much as I used to. But for many, many years, I looked really, really young. And it's like baby-faced. And it was like, so I always dressed up because people would treat me like a kid. And so that's something why I just think you may want to sort of, like when I say a compromise, so if everyone's wearing shorts, you might want to say, you know what, I'm just going to wear some nice jeans, but I'll still wear a polo or, or a shirt or something like that. Again, I won't wear, you know, everyone, people are wearing t-shirts where they have words, but you know what, like, you're not going to catch me slipping. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to remember what Colin said. I'm going to wear something else, even if you're wearing a plain t-shirt. You know, again, I would just always sort of have it just a step up. I just think that I think that for many of you, especially since you're going to be newer in your workspaces, that's probably the way to handle it. Now, again, these are all tips. You know, you do what makes you feel the most appropriate, but I do think that that would probably uh, be uh, something that would be beneficial to you all. Okay. Any questions? On it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that mean? Okay, so I say this, okay, because, you know, we, because there's, uh, because there's more than two genders, so there, you know, so there, so, you know, I know there's people who are non-binary and wear different types of clothing, so when I say traditional male clothing, I think of something like what I'm wearing, you know, this is something that traditionally a, a man would wear, you know, so that's sort of what I mean. You know, and so for females generally, so, well, females can wear, you know, people who uh, are dressed in traditional female clothing, it could be anything because, you know, there's a lot more options there than there are with, with, uh, with people who wear traditional men clothing. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm, I think I'm moving through this presentation much quicker than Mr. Green did. Uh, so we're going to, passing the smell test. Okay. So I have to be honest with you. When, when Johanna sent this to me, I looked at that. I said, "Oh man, I gotta talk about this one. This is a this is a challenge." So, first of all, I'm saying this because I don't want anybody to think that I'm accusing anybody of smelling poorly. But I want to put this out here because this is something that happens. And you may also notice this with some of your coworkers. This may have you know. So you may be totally fine. You might be like. What in the world? So you just want to sort of keep this in mind. So working in a professional setting, it is important that your personal odor does not overwhelm your coworkers. Okay? So here are some things to keep in mind. So be sure to shower or bathe daily. Something. Whatever you're doing. Okay? Something. Um, use some sort of deodorant or some kind of anti antiperspirant that's going to not, so you will not be, like, so what is called the musty smell or anything like that, you want to make sure that that is not something that's happening. Um, use cologne and perfume sparingly. So why? Because the thing is that you might be like, this smells good. And someone else like, what in the world is that? You know, oh my goodness. Oh, who, and, and you know, the thing is, see, now, you're going to be in a workspace and someone is going to be what is that? You know, so they're gonna make they're gonna make someone feel bad. Yes, you have a question. Oh, so that means so so that means just like a spritz here or there, like a little bit. So not so not bathing in actual cologne. There's some people who will. So I you know I work out at the gym in the morning. So there's some people who I mean would be like shh and like literally are spraying themselves or putting a whole bunch of cologne. And I'm like they've gone through. They're probably gonna go through their cologne bottle in about two weeks. So, if, you know, if, you know, sparingly, just a little bit, so it'll last you maybe six months, you know, something like that. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So, 
pay attention to the scent of your lotions. That's something important too. Um, because you know, a lot of times we're like, oh, our lotions smell really good. They may smell really good to you or to others, but there may some people, there's some people who have allergies to uh, to certain types of scents. That's something to keep in mind. I know that there's some organizations where they don't allow their staff to uh, to have any types of scented lotions because of the fact that it could, you know, may trigger their, their clients or you know, or could really just sort of mess with people's allergies. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind. Um, be aware of how your hair may smell. Now that's something where you're like, wait, what? What? Because again, different hair oils, things like that. Um, you just want you just want to be aware of it. Again, it's this is I would say this is like one of the more awkward awkward presentations to do because these are the awkward conversations to have when someone says, you know, oh, someone so smells. Can you talk to them, Colin? And I'm like, oh, yes, shady. <laughs> Yes. A little easier, but also should be addressed. Is when you do smell, when someone does smell good, or their hair does smell good, mm -hmm. it's not just walking up to people and sniffing them. But I've been there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's. I've done my hair, and yeah. just, and it's okay to how to politely express like. <laughs> yeah, this is you know this this also go this like this is gonna go into so you know this is pre the presentation I actually I wasn't covering but it can go into things because there's some of you I know that you know people may want to like touch your hair and stuff like that because this is where we're getting into sort of those microaggressions and things like that so it could be. Mm, Oh, 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 that smells good. And then touching, and there's, it becomes a whole bunch of stuff. So, you know, I always say that if someone gets too close, you can say, oh, you're a little bit close. Do you mind taking a step back? Uh, and, uh, and generally, they will, you know, because people are shocked that people would even say that because they almost feel like it's almost like second nature to certain people where they're like, you know, when I used to, when I used to cut my hair down, I think about the fact, and I didn't remember this until recently, but uh, people used to just put their hands on my head. And I was like, oh my God. And I remember at this, and this is when I was, this is when I was really looking young, like a, like a baby face. And I was like, I said, do you mind? I was like, why are you touching? And I, I think the first time someone did it, I said, why are you touching me? I just can't believe that. Oh, you cut your hair down so no. Oh, it feels really good. I said, it doesn't feel good to me. Do you mind? You know, so I said that. So now I would have a little bit more, now I would be a little bit more diplomatic and say, uh, that, that's inappropriate. Please do not step into my space. But that's what I would say now. But back then I was like, don't touch me. You know, so, so try to, so I would say that learn from my mistakes so you don't want to say, don't touch me. But you say, um, excuse me. You know, uh, I, I, I would prefer that you don't do that. You know, please take a step back. Uh, but that could be something. So Shady is right, because sometimes people will say, who, oh, that smells good. And they're all sniffing in your head. Oh, God, it can be, it can be, it can be rough. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, do I need? Yeah. Okay. All right, so. It's, all, it's related to, it's, it's these little things that someone can do to you that is, that, uh, that can be because of many things, but there is, it's almost like, it's like a little sort of jab. So for example, someone, all right, you guys, you guys pull up a microaggression at the, at the table here. I don't want to say yes, colleagues. Let's, let's do one. Okay, so I got one. Related to hair. Um, Or 
No, we don't, we're not, we're not, we're not going to dig back. So we don't, so we don't, so we don't, so, so we don't do that because we're not going to, because we, because we, because in the workplace, we don't do tit for tat or anything like that. So really what you do is you, you know, someone has said something so you can, and actually I have, I have a, I have a, a slide about this, but just to sort of give a little preview of this, if someone says something to you that is inappropriate, you know, there's a couple, there's a couple things you want to do. You want to, uh, you may want to address it um, and say, you know, I didn't, I don't appreciate that, or I didn't appreciate that, um, or you may want to hold off on it, and uh, and you may want to talk to, you know, your career coach and say, this situation happened. I don't quite know how to handle it, um, and uh, and I think, and the reason why, because the other thing is, is that. It's all about interpretation because the thing is, is that you may be thinking, and not to say that you're wrong. Someone may, totally may have said something, used a microaggression, did something to you, and you're like, mm -mm. "All right, here we go," and you're ready to go. But they can say, "I didn't say that at all. All I was saying was blah blah blah." So again, that's why I'm like, "No, nah, you don't want to jump into that. That's something that you don't you don't have to do." Because the other thing is, you don't have to be right in the moment. You already know you're right. You just know you're going to, you're, and the good thing is, is that you're working with an organization that's going to be there to have your back and to ensure that your workplace is one where you're supported so that won't happen again. Okay. Okay. So I don't know, I don't know, did, did the micro question, did you understand that? Okay. All right. Okay. Good. So, all right. Any, oh, also the other thing, personnel policy will give you guidance about lotions and, and, uh, and colognes and things like that. Uh, many of them will. And if there isn't anything in there, you may want to just ask the supervisor, is there a policy related to this? I didn't see it in here, you know. Especially if you know that you like, if you love scented lotions and it's something that you want to you wanna wear, and you're like, I don't see it listed in here, I would ask, you know, just so, because it's better to just find out up front than for you to show up one day and go, hmm, yeah, I'm smelling good. I'm like, what in the world is that, you know? So just, you know, it's, it's better to sort of know that ahead of time. Okay, any other questions on this? Okay. So, face you have been notified. So, this is actually something, this is a term that I got from my mother um, because we struggle with keeping our faces straight when people annoy us. So, there famously is a picture of my mother um, at a church planning meeting and I don't know what the person was saying but her she's like this it's captured for all time I think it's still at the church the picture might still be up there and I my mother was like oh my god why do I have that picture and I was like you obviously made that face long enough to be captured on camera and so and and she was and she was in middle age at that point so um she she was talking to I think one of her mentors and they said you know what think about when someone's annoying you you want to keep your face straight so think about the term face you have been notified so what does that mean somebody has said something really stupid or something that's offensive to you and you're like I am pissed but then you're like I can't show it on my face so face you have been notified this thing has happened we have to keep a straight face so that's sort of how it happens so. When you're in the workplace, you may hear something that you disagree with, or you may hear lots of things that you disagree with. One of your coworkers or your supervisors may say something to you. Could be a critique, or it could be, you know, going into a microaggression. It could just be something that's completely silly or off the wall, uh, especially people trying to get to know you. So, you know, there might be something about your name. For example, oh, 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 you know, I know somebody whose name doesn't sound anything like your name, and they'll say it. And you're going to be sitting there like, what in the world? Why did they, what, what, what does that have to do with me? So, instead of you looking at them like, or like, you know, you just, okay, you know, straight, oh, oh, okay, you know, and, uh, and, and, or you can even say, I don't quite understand, but if you're saying that with a straight face, it's different than you saying, I don't understand, you know, because they're going to get, a, because they're going to be like, you know, whereas you're just like, I don't, I don't understand, oh, oh, 
okay, you know, then they may they may try to explain more. They might just say, okay, I'm gonna I embarrass myself, so I'm gonna get out of here. So uh, that's that's what you hope for is that they realize, you know what, perhaps I'll just leave now. Um, but you want to keep that straight face. So it's important to remember that you are working and as a professional, remember you're always trying to conduct yourself as a professional. So a professional in the workplace is going to, uh, is not going to respond to something by making a face at them. Okay, so when you are receiving constructive criticism, so what does that mean? That means that there's something, you know, they, uh, you know, giving feedback on a work performance or, 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 or anything, you know, you want to take uh, you want to take the criticism as in the spirit in which it's supposedly given, which is that they're trying to help you in the workplace. You're not, you know, don't take it personally or as in as a reflection of you as a person. You want to keep your face neutral when you're receiving this this criticism. And usually, this you'll know that it's coming. You know, oh, I want to talk to you about your job performance, or there's just a few things that I think we can be improving upon. So if you're getting that, you already know that's coming. Okay, so you just want to make sure that you are keeping your face neutral. Be like, okay, neutral face, because I know I'm about to, uh, someone's going to critique me. Okay, I'm ready for it. You know, I always say consider using the words in your brain. Face, you have been notified to prepare yourself for this. Okay, this will make you aware of your facial expression. And, and, and this may be something you may even want to practice prior to doing this. Take a breath before responding if you choose to respond. So if someone is uh, going to say something to you, so remember when you said, wait, can I, you know, can I dig back? No, you don't want to do that. But if you do want to respond, take a breath. Because I will say this, that breath that you're taking, even though it's maybe like two seconds, it already calms you down. Whereas if someone says something to you and you're like, oh, you know, there's no time to think. There's no time to, there's no time to either consider it or ponder. But if you say, someone says, you know, they're, you know, we're, we're, we're struggling with you getting some of this work on time. Um, and you're thinking, well, I, it's only late because of the fact, oh, hold on one second and I'll let you go. Um, it's only late because I'm getting it late. You know, you're thinking that. So when they say this to you and you're like, wow, it's only late because you get it to me late. You know, you list, if you, if someone says this to you, you're thinking, you take a breath, and you're like, hmm, and you calm down because you're like, well, I'm just going to say, you know, you know, I've actually been receiving the assignments later, and that's why I've been turning them in late. That's totally different. You say, well, it's only late because, you know, especially because you're jumping back. Yes, you had a question. Well, I was just going to talk about what you're saying in my head. Um, my last job, I had worked at this very company for about three I mean, and I think that, you know, I, I will say this um, when it comes to something like that. So I think it's, it's, I think it, I think it's very mature of you to sort of have reflected on that situation, saying, you know what, you know, I gave up my job. And, uh, and so as a result, I, I gave up my money. I am not really there to advocate for these other people because I quit. And so now it's like, mm, maybe I could have handled that differently. Um, so I think that's absolutely very mature. The other thing just to sort of think about, just to sort of be kind to yourself, is the fact is that 
if, if this woman was describing people as animals, that probably wasn't the healthiest work environment for yourself. And so in a lot of ways, you just sort of, you, you were advocating for yourself because you realized, you know what, this isn't, you know, this isn't a good space for me. Um, so I, keep, so I, I say that to you because I just want you to understand, I think that, I think, it, I think absolutely you, you could have sort of said, you know, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to walk away from this lady and I'm going to think about some things before I sort of decide what my next steps are. And then you may have not, you may have decided, you know what, I think it is best that I leave. Um, but because you responded in a moment, you realize I didn't have the opportunity to really sort of to really make that decision. I just made it in a moment. But it may, but it still sounds like it may have not been the healthiest of environments for you. So, um, so I say that to you. So I mean, very much, very mature of you. But you know, cut yourself a break because that sounds like sounds like a mess over there. So, um, but thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate that. Um, if you find yourself getting emotional, so that could be sad, mad, or glad. Uh, well, not glad, but sad, mad. Uh, excuse yourself. Go to the restroom. Take a walk. Uh, you know that that can always that could, that's something else I would consider doing. Okay, so you just the, the thing is is that in these situations you want to have control over yourself and your emotions because this is your this is your job this is your experience and you know i would say this i said i'm not gonna let anybody run me out of a spot you can, i'll run myself out of a spot but i don't want anybody else to run me out of one but I can also appreciate the fact that sometimes it's not the healthiest of environments. But again, what I will reiterate, you have a whole team of people here that say yes, that are here to ensure that your work environment is, uh, is, is, uh, is, uh, is pleasant, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, supportive, and, uh, and, and that you are really learning uh, in your work environments. Okay, so you don't. And so this is not. So th you're not alone. So I say this. Please take advantage of that, Shady. I just want to add, like in, in this situation, one of the things is a lot of work has been put in with your employers to make them prepared for what they have agreed to do. So I want you guys to understand that a lot of people have done hours upon thousands of hours of work towards that. So. If you don't think you're walking into a situation where they like have no clue or no understanding, so don't feel like I want to be that person who says something or whatever. No, come to one of us, come to somebody, and bring something up because we've done that work. So we want to show all the work that we've done with the employers just as much as the work we've done with you is being validated. So speak up to whoever you feel comfortable to speak up with. Okay. All right. Yes, Shara. Um, so we live in such a little bit of a new right now. We are living in a virtual world. So we have a lot of businesses and probably all of my colleagues sitting at the table can tell me we have been doing other things like the news and it looks like we're having that space to have the roadside space outside or with the people that are living there because we have outside stuff going on. So we may be multitasking and getting emails from somebody like, what is this talking about, right? <laughs> And our face says that, and then we might get DMs like, hey, are you okay? What's going on? If you have to separate from your computer, it's okay. Make sure you turn your video off. But when you are on a Zoom meet or a Teams meet, you Google meet, or whatever you're meeting at, you want your face to be present because they, your employer wants to know that you're engaged, that you're listening, and that you are paying attention. A lot of times I see people with no camera on at all, and it's just their name. And then somebody may say, I have to listen to them. Shara, how do you feel about this? And Shara is not by her computer. So Shara wants to take a bathroom break. And Shara did not say, be right back. Or one second, guys. So now it looks like I'm totally not paying attention. So I'm running from the bathroom like, oh, guys, okay, let's get it out. Because I didn't follow the proper steps. So I definitely do. Start a virtual world. It was a little bit different because you got your passes. We're two years into it. So you don't get as many passes as you kind of used to. So just be conscious about we are in this new world, so we have to kind of follow new kind of rules to make sure that we are engaged there and present at all times. Shara absolutely speaks to a really wonderful point, and, uh, and I'm sorry I missed that. Um, so uh, that's really true. 
Um, I have I have two examples of literally everything that Shara just said, and they all happened within the last year. So uh, a year ago, I was working for um, another organization while working for Say Yes, and uh, and I was in a meeting, and I was reading, I was I was I was multitasking. So I'm in Zoom, they could look at my face. I'm reading something, and I didn't understand what someone had written. So I I don't, and I know I'm always doing face. You have been notified, so I generally keep a straight face. But I must have just. My, my eyes just did a little bit of something. I had five people DM me within 20 seconds. Are you okay? What happened? What's going on? What, you didn't like what they said? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my God. And I realized, I was like, these people are really paying attention to me. So that was, so I said, so, you know, I had to, so, so I had to, you know, I said, oh, I said, I, I said, something else had popped up on my screen. I was trying to understand what it meant, um, which was true, I, but I didn't get into the nitty gritty of what I was looking at. Um, and then recently, um, I'd say, yes, you know, we just moved into our new, uh, our new, uh, building on Jefferson. Um, it was probably, I don't know, it was my first full week in the building. Nobody had come to see me for days. I had my first meeting, Zoom meeting, so I closed my door. And, um, and, I'm, and I'm in there, and literally the meeting was just about to start. Knock, knock, knock. And I was like, huh? So I, so I, so I, so I, I, I put myself, um, so I, I don't have my name, it comes up with my headshot. So I did that, I jumped away, and I answered the door. I talked to somebody. I think it might have been Aaron. So I was like, hey, yeah, I'm in a meeting. Blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, okay. So I closed the door. I go back. Knock, 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 knock. I'm like running back and forth. For, like, it was literally five people in a row. And so then finally, you know, I hear Colin, Colin, Colin. So it's the people on my Zoom call. Because they're all doing like, they were doing like roll call. And I'm like, so I rushed back and I said, I'm so sorry. Everyone suddenly started knocking on my door. But that was the thing. I was like, oh no. So I mean, I instituted a couple of different things for my, so now I have a sign that goes on my door when I'm in a meeting. So I'm like, I'm in a meeting. Please don't, don't knock on the door unless, unless there's a fire or something. Um, but, but it was something that happened and you know and I was like oh my god I don't know. you know I, I, I thought I was embarrassed I was like oh no I'm looking like you know I don't know what I'm doing um, but again that is something just to keep in mind so with all of you um, if you are doing things with zoom Shia is absolutely correct you want to stay present I also encourage you to keep your cameras on at all times unless you have to step away and when you step away you can even put in the chat I have to step away excuse me and just do that so people are aware okay all right. Any questions on any of this? Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. So if people are saying something to you, and it's uh, and and it's like something mean or nasty to you. Yeah. Like I was working, right? Mm-hmm. Like one dude came in, and I thought he was being serious, right? Because he was like, "What did you say?" He was like, "So I called ahead." Sure. Like if I was gonna say like, I don't know, like what you were saying earlier, right. like just trying to be professional about it, because then I feel like somebody will try to start like, an Well, yeah, that's. I mean that that's super rude that 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 person did that, and I really think what they were trying to do is they were just trying to get a rise out of you. And so I look at it like this. I think number one, I think you handled it very professionally because you did not respond. You did not. You did not respond to it. You were like, and you did whatever you needed to do. And I feel like in those situations, it's terrible because people can be really, really nasty. But again, I go back to, you know what? I'm here because I was hired into my role. So I'm going to do my job to the best of my ability. And I'm not going to let anybody come up in my space and mess me up. So, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, you, you know, so you didn't have to say anything. You handled it, you handled it appropriately. You know, you, you know, you could have, you could have, you could have added a little joke here. And they said, well, yes, they, yes, I know you did call and I'm right here. And you could have kept it moving and, and done whatever. You could have done, you could have thrown in a little something, but you handled it fine. You absolutely handled it fine. People like that are just there because they just want to push your buttons. Don't let anybody push your buttons. You're, when you're hired into a role, it's because you were the best person for the job. 
and you can just do your job as, uh, to the best of your ability. Don't let anybody mess you up. Don't let anybody take you off your path. Okay. So you had it. You had it. See, you had it. You didn't even need. You didn't even need anything. But I'm glad I was able to tell you that you handle it absolutely appropriately. And that's for any of you who are in the workplace. If someone is saying something to you, something that is, uh, especially in your in your employers, through us again. So in the moment, let it brush off. Do what you need to do, and then you immediately head over to to the say yes crew. Say listen, you know. People are acting out of pocket. They said X, Y, and Z, blah, 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 and then and and we'll and we'll handle it. So just let me know that. But in your case, when you're in the in your position, you handled it fine. You were you were you were you you kept the calm, cool, and collective, and you didn't. Even, and I bet you the person was like, man, they didn't even get mad. You know, they probably they probably just there to sort of needle you. You didn't have to. You didn't even take them. You didn't take the bait. Like, I mean, I don't know if you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, I, I mean, I guess to me, I'm like, if you are, you know, you're in a, you're in a, because you're working in customer services, basically, what it is, so very forward facing, you know what, I mean, again, I would just be like, I'm here to do my job, so you can laugh it off, you can, you know, you can, you can make, you know, you could, you know, again, you know, they, he was trying to make a joke about you, uh, you know, talking about your looks or your height, and you could say, and you, again, you could say, hey, I'm here. You know, I'm doing what I'm doing. And if someone is saying something nasty to you, say so if someone's nasty to you, you don't have to engage with them at all, whether or not it's just you, you know, getting them through that transaction and getting them out. Um, you can, you know, if, if I don't know what your, your structure is with your organization in terms of talking to supervisors or things like that, they can help at all or if they're going to help at all. But, again, I would just not... I would generally just not engage in those in those because again they're, they're trying to their 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 goal is to make you mad and they want to and and I think that there's something more going on with them than there is with you. You're there because again you were the best person for the job and you are still there because you are good at what you do. Keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. All right. So. Self-care. We have all been living through this pandemic since 2020. So that has resulted in a level of trauma that we experience on a daily basis. And some of this may be also why you have people who are jerky and in coming into your place and, and are trying to uh, be nasty. Because who knows? what types of trauma they're going through. That doesn't excuse it because, hey, we're all being traumatized on a day-to-day -day basis because we are still living through this pandemic. Um, but it's important that we check in with ourselves. We want to make sure that we're feeling okay. So I would consider starting your day with some sort of mindfulness exercise, whatever that looks like. You know, Some of you may already do this. Some of you might do like a yoga, some of you might do daily prayer, some of you know there's, there's lots of things that you may do. But I would encourage, if you don't have any sort of practice set up, so you get up, and you stumble out of bed, and you're like, oh, 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 oh. I, would, I would try to add something, 30 seconds, something, just to sort of center yourself for your day. I think it really can be helpful. Um, but again, you need to do what makes the most sense for you. Um, so maybe it's not something that you start your day with. Maybe it's something you do in the middle of the day when you you know when you're doing when you have your lunch break or or what have you. Maybe it's how you end your day. But I would take some time during the day to do some sort of self reflection, some sort of prayer, some sort of thought process, some sort of deep breath, something. It really can help you out a lot. Um, reflect on your day at the end to identify how you're feeling, how you're handling your experience. So I I'm saying this because you are all going to be working in these new environments. And there's a lot of stuff that you're going to be going through on your day-to-day -day basis. Some of you may already do things like journaling or, or things like that. So you may already have a way to sort of capture what's happened with your day. But I think it's good to sort of just take a little bit of time to sort of say, OK, now what happened with my day? Whew. Man, there was a lot that happened. Okay, that went well, this went well, that did not go so well. I wonder why that didn't go well. Maybe I should write that down. Um, just something to keep in mind. Because again, you, you're learning a lot in these experiences, but you also 
want to, uh, but you also want to uh, learn and you also want to grow from these experiences as well. So it's not, it's just, it's not just about, okay, well, what did I do with my day? Oh, this was great. But it's about, okay, how can I take this and help to help me evolve into, uh, into a stronger professional, okay? Um, don't be afraid to ask for help if you're not feeling well or something just doesn't seem right. So you all know how you feel, you know, when you're feeling okay or good. And if you're not feeling that way, if something's just not right, now we all have an off day. We may have an off few days. But if, we are, but if you are feeling like, you know what, this past week, six out of seven days, I really just was not feeling right. Something just wasn't right. You may want to say something. If you go into that next week and you're and seeing that same pattern, absolutely say something. You know, you can say, talk to any of the career coaches here. You can talk to whomever. You can talk to me. You can. I have my. I'll, I'll share my contact information at the end. Um, just reach out to someone. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of resources out there, and we want to make sure that everybody is feeling supported. Okay. So. I end with, we are here to help, and we want you to be successful. So I have it bolded and capped, so in essence, I technically would be yelling, but I'm not going to yell. Uh, but, we do, but it's absolutely true. We are absolutely here to help. We want you to be successful. This is so important to us, and you are all important to us. We want your experience to be a good one. We want you to be able to really be, build a career. That is why, that's why you got your opportunity. And we know you can do it, but we want you to be successful. And there's so much that's happening in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So please, please, please reach out if you need any help. We have, lo we have lots of resources for your help, OK? So the workplace can be inspiring and fun while also being challenging and scary. Um, so I hope that using these techniques in the presentation, it will help you to be more, uh, uh, be able to more effectively navigate the new experience. And as I said before, say so yes, Buffalo is here to support you, and we are so excited and proud of you all. Okay, so I have put my information here, so you can always reach out to me. Um, and uh, so that's my email address, that's my uh, number. I say yes, but it will also go to my cell phone. Okay, and so that's it. Any questions? Oh, oh you don't get this presentation. You don't need to. You, you, I mean, they're literally going to give it to you. Yeah. But I'll go back so you can still, still grab it. But they're going to get it. They're going to get you. So, yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Buffalo Spree took that picture last year, so yeah. So, so yeah. So that was actually a professional photographer. That wasn't me doing a selfie. Um, but, but any questions? Any additional questions? Anything? What's that? The the. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? No, there is. That's a that's a good question. Uh, any any other questions? No, no. Okay. All right. Thank you all so much for your time. Oh, sure. No problem. <laughs>